What is happening people? It is Brian Alger with NeverState.com and for today's video I want to talk to you guys about how I've built a thick and strong upper back over the last 24 years. I'm just going to be going over a bunch of row variations that I've personally been able to use that I've found to probably be some of the most beneficial out of all the row variations because there are a lot of row variations. Now if you've been with the channel for any amount of time, you will know that I am a massive advocate of the row. Even one of the very first talking videos I ever did was all about the benefits of the barbell row. Now, you guys will also know from a lot of my other things, when I talk about bodybuilding stuff and getting bigger and larger, a lot of times what I would prescribe is a lot of strongman stuff because it just, it works. But it does tend to beat you up and a lot of people do not have access to strongman implements. So for me personally, to build a big upper back, I'm talking about doing things like rack deadlifts, front carries, a bunch of strongman moves. But I know a lot of people in a regular gym only have access to a barbell and dumbbell, so that's pretty much when I go to over today. <clears throat> Let's try that one again. But yeah, I guess I'm gonna be going over a lot of stuff with the barbell and a little bit with dumbbells, so you can do any of these variations in any gym that you're possibly working out in. Now, I know there's some of you out there still who are not big advocates of the barbell row, but trust me, if I could convince you otherwise, I would do everything in my power to. All of the best strongman, powerlifters, bodybuilders, everyone talks about how much rows played such a massive difference in their lifting career. If it has to do with a barbell and you're doing the big four, you should be doing rows. All variations and all kinds, but if one thing is for sure, if your front of your upper body is stronger than the back of your upper body, you are leaving a lot of pounds and mass out there. So let's fix that. Now before I get into my examples, I know a lot of people out there are form Nazis and they don't like to let things get a little bit crazy and a little bit dirty, but I'm here to tell you that if you're going to be pushing any sort of major strength levels or putting a bunch of size onto your body, then you're gonna to have to get a little bit ugly at times because not all rows are created equal. There are absolutely a time and a place for perfect strict rows. But there's also time for those really ugly, heavy, just not pretty at all rows because those rows need prom dates too. Which just so happens to be a perfect segue into going into the heavy versions of these rows. Now some rows like I talked about are just gonna be heavier by design, right? So for these rows in general, you're gonna be moving as heavy weight as possible. You're not gonna be getting any pause reps up at top. There is not gonna be any pause. Maybe you're intending the pause, it's gonna be too heavy to do that. These, you're just trying to survive and get through. You're trying to move a bunch of weight. So the very first exercise I wanna talk about is nothing more than the heavy barbell row. Yeah, there's thousands of options, but I just chose that. Yeah. But the difference between these rows and the rows that most people are doing it, these rows are going to be heavy. Some people might call them rows with body English. Some people might call them cheat rows. I call them rows. Because if you're gonna add a substantial amount of thickness to your body, I'm not talking about getting wide, I'm talking about from chest to back getting thicker, you're gonna need to move some heavy weight. Now I know virtually everyone has tried the barbell row and a lot of people say that they've hurt their back on it and it doesn't feel good to them or whatever. And the thing is about the barbell row is it's very, very simple and a lot of people are overthinking it. People bend over with the barbell. Do not bend over with the barbell. That's the same problem that you're having with a good morning or a stiff-legged deadlift or any type of action where the bar feels extremely heavy to you. Most likely that is because it is floating off the middle of your foot. When you're doing a barbell row, I want you to keep three things in mind. Number one, make sure you're breathing and you are braced correctly. If you do not know how to breathe and brace same way that you would on a deadlift or a squat you need to be doing that on a row if you don't know how make sure you check out some of my breathing and bracing videos i have a lot of them that go into very good detail and you really that is the most important thing in all lifting heavy things and staying safe but also associated with that the second point is that the barbell always needs to stay over the middle of your foot for whatever reason a lot of people when they decide to do barbell rows just pull the bar out way out in front of their toes and they row out there i'm not completely sure why they would do that because you would never do a deadlift out there that would be absolutely insane right you would never start a deadlift that far out in front of you however when you're doing a row or a good morning or a stiff legged deadlift people will do it so don't do that guys always make sure that, that bar is lined up over the middle of your foot which leads us to the third point which is that in order to keep that bar over the middle of your foot you're going to adjust your hips so you always want to be moving your body around the barbell you don't want to move your barbell around the body when you're doing any sort of strength move that's not going to go well for you so instead of just bending over to row the barbell i want you to push your hips back and hinge i know to the untrained eye the two movements look very very similar but the difference between pushing your butt back is going to allow that barbell to stay over top of the middle of of your foot, which also is surprisingly exactly where you can biomechanically hold the most weight. But exactly like when you're in the setup of a deadlift, you can adjust where that bar is by just moving your hips up, down, back, forward, doing whatever. So make sure you're braced, make sure that bar is over the middle of your foot. In order to keep that bar over the middle of your foot, adjust your hips so that you're moving your body around the barbell, not the barbell around your body. But yes, big heavy barbell rows where you're actually cheating, using a little bit of body English. Now I'm not saying go completely off the rails here, but almost like a hand clean, like get a little bit 
of a row action plus a little bit of leg drive in there. Do whatever you have to do to actually move that weight, but these you want to go heavy on. You'll be able to do strict things later. For right now, you're trying to get as much mass on your back as possible, and the only way that you're gonna do that is by moving big, heavy things like this barbell row. The next one, which is very similar to a barbell row, is going to be the deadlift row. Now, this has been made popular very lately from a guy called Dr. Deadlift Online. His name is Caleb Wollum. I probably screwed that up, dude, I'm sorry. Anyway, one of the reasons why he is so famous is because he looks like a relatively normal dude who just pulls superhuman weights and it's absolutely amazing. When asked exactly how he does it, his number one answer were deadlift rows. The whole idea behind this is that you're pretty much gonna start a deadlift and you're gonna finish it with a row. So line up just like any conventional deadlift and then once that bar gets a little bit up to your mid shin to around your knees, you turn it into a row and you finish the movement, but you carry the momentum from the deadlift so you can handle much larger weights. It's gonna be important to try to control that negative, especially right from the very point where it hits your chest. And the third heavy variation of the day is going to be the croc row. Now, when discussing a croc row, all that we're really talking about is doing a single arm dumbbell row, except much heavier than you want to for a lot more reps than you want to. For this reason, I would definitely advise you to throw on a pair of straps and grab the heaviest dumbbells that you can possibly use. Now, these dumbbells, if you didn't have straps, maybe you'd rep out 12 to 15 before your hand gave out or before your back gave out, but that, my friends, is not what a croc row is about. During a croc row, when you get to that point where you can't do anymore, you do a lot more. And luckily, you have that strap on, so now your grip isn't gonna be a factor, but believe me, this will still work your grip, even if you are using a strap, but just continue rowing like you are trying to start a lawnmower that's been broken for 35 years. Now again, make sure your breathing and bracing is a point because you're gonna be getting a little bit ugly on this. You're gonna be twisting your body, so if you are not braced and you don't have enough air in your belly, there's a lot of things twisting around there, so make sure that is there, but these are an awesome row that will definitely test your lungs. But it is an amazing way to add strength and thickness to your upper back. Which brings us to some of our middleweight or medium type of variations now. On the heavy variations, like I said, when you're pulling to the top of that row, you're probably not getting any pause at all. You're just surviving those reps and trying to move as much weight as possible. For these, you're gonna get a slight pause. Now, we both know sometimes when we do pause things, uh, that pause is indistinguishable to anyone else, but we know we did it, don't we? So it's like that kind of pause. This can be more of like your five by five, four by eight type of rep range, and I want you guys to think about these rows. A lot of times on the heavy rows, I don't want you guys really thinking about what muscle groups you're moving. I want you to think about moving weight on the heavy exercises. On these, I do want you to start thinking about a little bit of the muscle groups, but not so much as we're gonna get into, because we're gonna get into a little bit more of the isolated kind of, not really, but for me, isolation movements later. For these, I do want you to be pulling every single rep from your ring finger, all right? So whether you are doing a T-bar row, a barbell row, or whatever, I just want you to keep more focus on pulling with your ring fingers, okay? If you do that, I swear you'll get more lat and rhomboid involvement. I don't know why, I wish I was smarter, but I'm telling you it works. Come on! Anyway. <laughs> The first medium or middleweight type of row that I want you guys to be thinking about is the T-bar or corner row. Now, if you're lucky enough to have a T-bar row, we just got one at our gym and I think they are absolutely amazing. We got the Rogue one, it works terrific. The best thing I like about it though, honestly, is that you can add resistance bands to it. Now, adding resistance bands to a row probably doesn't mean much to a lot of people, but when you're thinking about that middle rep range where it's heavy enough to just get a slight pause, when you're doing dealing with some accommodating resistance that's getting heavier and heavier as, you're, as you get up, it allows for a really good pull and strength stretch and pump at the top that you don't normally get with just straight weight because that weight just kind of, once the force leaves it, it's going back down. With the band, it's continued all the way up. I absolutely love it. Now, if you're not fortunate enough to have a T-bar row in your gym, it's not a big deal. I bet you have a corner. And it doesn't necessarily need to be the corner of the gym because if that's drywall, you're gonna mess it up and you're gonna get kicked out of that gym, don't do it. Find a metal corner like the frame of a machine or do some dumbbells or do something to make your own corner. But from there, all you need to do is straddle that bar and then you can use whatever attachment you want. Some people use a little V-handle. I like to use a lot of different types of grips, so whether it be grenade holds or pinch blocks or whatever because I'm able to kind of work my grip and kill two birds with one stone on that. There's a lot of people who don't do anything more than just grab a hold of the bar. But whatever grip you decide to use, just remember that if your hands are neutral or semi-supinated, so straight like this, you're gonna be pulling probably with a little bit more lat. If you can flat them out so they're more pronated like this, you're gonna be hitting more rhomboid, trap, and you know, rear delt. So keep that in mind when you're making your decisions about what your goals are and what weak points you're trying to hit. The second medium weight type of variation I wanna talk about is the single arm barbell row. Now I know a lot of people do single arm dumbbell rows and they're amazing. I swear to you, this variation is one of my favorite variations of all rows ever. But you basically need to do the same thing in the corner with the barbell or if you have a landmine attachment, you can use that. But once you are there, you need to find something to post your handle. Now a lot of times I would like to use a bench or a step or whatever I can find, but pretty much 
post my hand down there on the ground and then I'm going to pull straight up and I need to load this thing up with a lot of 10s or 25 or something like that. A 45 will get you a trip to the dentist. But I suppose because of the backside of the barbell being anchored, I'm able to really get a lot of hold and just I'm able to use my back so much more on that exercise and I absolutely love these. I highly recommend them and I don't see anyone doing them. And also, if your gym does not have heavy enough dumbbells for you to really get into that crock row or if you're just too strong for regular dumbbell rows or whatever, then this is a great way to add a bunch of weight and get a similar exercise that hits you completely different. But if you do not have the weights, then this is a good substitution. And the third and final variation of the medium rows that we're gonna be talking about today is going to be the, I totally forgot, Penlay row. Penlay row, come on, man. So for the Penlay row, you're gonna be starting with a barbell on the ground every single rep. Now, this goes in the medium category for me because if it was a barbell row and it wasn't starting from the ground, I would do these very heavy. Now. I tend to use a decent amount of body English on these, whether I'm supposed to or not, but I do. So these end up getting heavy for me anyway. But if you do them properly, you're not supposed to get a whole lot. That back is supposed to stay pretty much like a tabletop, but you need to keep that bar over the middle of your foot like I talked about with the barbell rows, but you are able to get a ton of air in your belly, get really, really braced, and then explode that bar off of the ground. These are an excellent way to build strength off the floor for your deadlift, as well as bench press, as well as just about everything. But again, for all of these middle range variations, you're looking at the five to five, four to eight, a rep range and you're trying to get a pause up the top and remember from your ring fingers guys that's going to come very very important especially in these next three where it's going to be loaded variations that we're going to get into now and the first of these is going to be the seal row now the seal row is a tough one to set up okay i end up stacking a bunch of bumper plates and sticking a bench on top and doing all kinds of things to make this thing achievable alan thrall has a really cool seal row bench that uh, i'm looking into investing into one of those but guys, you need to set this up any way that you possibly can. Basically, it's a chest supported bro that you are completely just parallel to the ground with. Now, of course, the reason why this thing is called a seal row is because as this thing gets heavier and harder, you start to curl your body up like a seal and you look like a fool. But they work, so it's worth it. But all your normal cues are still super important here. Squeezing the bar, breathing, bracing, everything normal, except you're not gonna be able to use anything except for what the seal row is going to allow you to use, which isn't much. So you can expect your barbell row weights to drop significantly on this one, but it's a great way to isolate your back for building an upper, thick, tight, strong upper cut back. And don't forget that since all of these row variations are going to be a little bit lighter by nature, you're definitely going to be wanting to be pulling from your ring fingers as well as just really focusing on your mind muscle connection and actually using things that you're trying to use. And the seal row, trust me, it'll let you know. The next one is going to be the Meadows row made famous by John Meadows. Now, all of this is is basically a single arm barbell row except you're turning to the side so you're getting more of a pronated grip on the bar. Also, since you're going to be grabbing the actual collar of the bar, that is a much thicker handle. It's the same diameter as an axle so you're going to be getting a little bit of grip work there but if your grip work is not up to par for your back strength then definitely make sure that you're using straps on this now even though that it is lighter by nature you still need to have a good brace and you still need to have a lot of air in your belly because you are kind of in a contorted position you can push your hand on top of your leg or you can push on something else if you want it really depends on what you want to do but if you do push on your leg make sure that your core is engaged because you don't want to be slipping anything weird in there and the final third variation of this light section here that we're going to talk about is completely underrated and that is the inverted row now i know inverted rows are really really easy for a lot of people people can do pull-ups people can do rows pretty heavy so for a lot of people the inverter bro is very very tough but there's a lot of people that are in that situation and this is a great way to actually teach them to initiate firing their lats firing the rhomboids teaching them how to actually use their back now is you are more advanced like myself and you're like, yeah, inverted bros are cool but if I was gonna do them I'd end up doing it for time or something because I'm just gonna knock them out right drop to a single arm and get a good squeeze at the top and it completely changed the exercise. It's almost like doing a pistol or a single leg squat. Doesn't seem like it'd be a big deal. Do 50 of them and you'll be sore out of your mind. So the inverted row, or better yet, the single arm inverted row with good holds, almost like doing an upside down dumbbell row, is a great way also to finish off your back. Now, as far as how I would use these things, I just put out that free dark horse program, guys, and a lot of people are asking about what variations you use and stuff like that. So if you are into giant sets and you do the antagonistic muscle group before your bench muscle group, then these rows would be ideal on that. Now. Just like in that program, you have heavy weeks, you have medium weeks, and you have light weeks. So you have nine weeks worth of rowing, three of which are heavy, three of which are medium, three of which are light. 
I just gave you three heavy, three medium, three light. Yep. If you guys haven't noticed, I'm trying very, very hard to just help you guys build this program because I know a lot of times they could be confusing and a lot of people are not in a position to actually pay money for a personalized program and I do want to make sure that you guys are getting the benefits of some of the stuff that like we're discover discovering was that word. But if you guys do decide to do that, that is awesome. If you decide not to do that, that is awesome too, guys. I just want you to work on whatever you want to work on and these nine row variations are probably some of the top ones out of the thousands of row variations that I have personally used over the last 24 years to build a thick and strong upper back. And so I just wanted to pass that along to you guys, so I really do hope that helps. Now, just like for the bench assistance finishers video, guys, I'm gonna do a Q&A for the squat assistance finishers. So if you guys have any squat Q&A questions, please leave them in the comment section down below because I'm gonna do the same thing. And guys, I really enjoyed just being able to give kind of shorter answers and just knock out a ton of people's questions because that means I get to help more people. So if you guys do have questions about squat, it can be anything, programming, technique, strength, what, whatever you guys want to talk about with the squat, just leave it in the comments section down below. Don't forget that I do have a seminar on December 1st. Spots are starting to close up, so if you guys do want to sign up for that, make sure that you do. Other than that, man, I'm pretty, pretty much solid. Yeah, I think. I don't know, until five minutes from now. But guys, I really do appreciate you staying with me and I hope that these were helpful to you. I enjoyed making it, I hope you enjoyed watching it. I will catch up with you later in the week, but until I do, guys, go out to something amazing in your lives, keep working hard, people, be nice to each other. I need squat questions. I'll see you then. Oh no!